Okay, Rachel Donner, you look very good out there, man. <laughs> Honestly, I have to ask, would you be open to an exhibition? Um, you know, that's that's popular right now. People are watching it. There's a lot of money in it, too. I mean, I would really have to think about that. I mean, uh, our deal when me and Onino got together, there was only one fighter in the family because when we were both competing, two people cutting weight at the same time was murderous in the house, <laughs> especially with being a guy who can cut, what, five pounds in you know, one run and a female only cuts uh, a mile, a uh, mile, um, a pound in the same amount of time. Yeah. Um, so I really haven't uh, competed since 2008. Mm -hmm. um, I'd have to put a lot of thought and effort and sacrifice into training because I don't do anything half way. Yeah, 100%. Um, I got to ask you about Clarissa Shields. She's a uh, the self-proclaimed quote, a lot of people do consider the greatest woman of all time in the sport of boxing. Um, she's making a transition into MMA. You were a Taekwondo fighter, I think, right? Yes. Um, and Nonito is a boxer. You've seen his preparation. You know what it takes to be a part of, of both sports, so to speak, kind of, somewhat, to mm -hmm. an extent. Um, um, any advice for her, and how do you think um, that's going to play out for her? Um, I, sh I think she has an athletic advantage. Um, there's some boxers that you see them step out of boxing and you're wondering if they're ever an athlete in any other different type of sport. Um, Clarissa, I believe, has the build of an athlete and she can adjust. Now, what's going to be difficult for her, which I believe even if I stepped into the MMA ring, is there's so many different disciplines that you need to be prepared for. Um, one of them is, you know, ground game. Um, striking, standing up is would be significantly easy for her. She just have to, you know, add the kicks and stuff. But ground game's a whole different game in itself. Mm. Um, once people get you to the ground, there's so many different things that you can do. Um, so, do I believe that she can transition? Well, yes. Do I believe it's not as easy as everyone makes it to seem? Yes. But if she's disciplined enough to make sure that all her ground, um, her, the overall game plan in MMA is covered, then she should be mm -hmm. fine. Um, where do you stand and it's kind of what she has to do to I guess uh, maybe elevate her profile so to speak that she has to literally compete in two sports um, and it seems like she's not getting the attention that she deserves maybe uh, it's a gender inequality thing I'm not sure but do you want to comment on that and um, how do you feel about uh, her chances in MMA do you think that she could uh, go further in MMA like she could become a, a bigger star there or what do you think well I mean there's so many differences between boxing and MMA um, one of them of oh. course is the amount of money that yeah. boxers get paid compared to MMA fighters um, that being said one of the things that uh, that MMA does have is you know the UFC like there's one champion mm -hmm. um, with boxing there's how many different ones four major belts and then the rest of like little trinkets right um, so when you say I am UFC champion, that's it. There's no other question about it. Mm -hmm. And I think that kind of level of publicity of being the only one in the world um, can project her higher, right, um, than in the boxing world. Um, female boxing is getting more noticed. Um, it's starting to become on, you know, mainstream TV. Um, and it's, it's a lot to do with, you know, the MMA fights, right? Ronda Rousey who paved the way, um, crossed into mainstream media. And it, MMA and boxing can coexist and it's helping each other out yeah. but these female boxers have to put themselves out in different ways and spread the news that you know female fighters aren't you know it's not just a man's sport women are just as intellectual yes we might not be as strong but there's different aspects to the game um, and if anyone actually believes in the sweet science they know it's not just bronze mm -hmm. so it's just people have to get used to seeing females be tough Mm -hmm. And that era is now, mm -hmm. you know, new eras, women are coming up in power and they are not afraid to say, no, that's not right. I'm going to fight for what mm -hmm. I deserve. Um, you mentioned Ronda Rousey. I think she's uh, uh, she's going to be a mother soon. She's expecting a baby. Uh, any advice for her, man? I know she, she had her, her, her best days in MMA, but she's kind of low profile now. Yeah. She had the WWE run. But uh, she's not going to be a mother. So this is, this is a different step into her, her real life, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean... The one thing I could say about being a mother, um, my one advice, it's funny, is, is reading the Baby Whisperer book. Um, that it, fighters know schedule is everything, and a baby is no different. If you give them um, a schedule, they know what to expect. And when you know what to expect, there's less you know, trials and tribulations. You are always going to get trials and tribulations, but it, it helps it decrease. Um, I congratulate her. Like That's not something that everybody wants to do. Um, and it's not always something that people rise to the occasion. I think 
during COVID, it really did put a spotlight on parents that they needed to step up and be parents. Like, this is what we were here for. You brought a child into this real world, you're, uh, they're your responsibility and you're supposed to give them the best. Um, I would never take back anything from having my kids. They are the best of everything and they make you appreciate and give you a different perspective in life because there's times where I'm upset or something like that and my boys are like, it doesn't really matter. And I'm like, I'm getting advice from this child, you know what I mean? And yeah. Because they look at, they literally look at the present moment as the present. They don't think about what could happen tomorrow. They think about today mm. and how either A, sad they are, mad or happy. Mm -hmm. And you could totally feel and see their energy. Yeah, I was actually speaking to Gary Russell earlier and he was telling me how he has um, things situated uh, for his family in case something ever happened to him. Underneath those professional fighters, the sport is, is, is very dangerous and you know, I think it can happen on any given night. Um, how do you guys prepare for, um, I guess, moving forward, uh, uh, his post-boxing career and if something were to happen, God forbid, to Nonito one day or something, uh, what kind of plans do you guys have in terms of that? Well, we have different financial advisors. We have different businesses, um, some that people know about, some that people don't. Um, I also do a lot of uh, consulting work on the side. Um, there's things that Nonito feels like, you know, after boxing, he doesn't know what he wants to get into, whether it's... Um, actually being a boxing trainer and coach, um, managing or advising, um, or getting, it out com go getting out completely mm -hmm. um, and going into different aspects. Personal coaching is one of them. He's always had people asking because um, a lot of the knowledge he speaks is either A, from experience, or B, it just comes to him. People, mm -hmm. He talks to people and he just downloads from the universe, like messages that were meant for that person and what they really needed to hear in that, at that point in time. So I know that's um, one of his callings. Um, he's a great motivational speaker, and one-on-one -on -one you hear him talking to boxers, even here today, um, you know, talking to him, asking for advice, and he takes the time. Mm -hmm. um, that's part of the reason why he is the nicest guy in boxing, because he <laughs> takes his time. He's very genuine about it. Yeah. Um, so I know he has a lot of things lined up. There's a lot of opportunities that people have offered us. It really just has to deal with when he decides to walk away, when no one else decides up for him, but he decides. And then what his passion's gonna be, because literally the next part of his life is gonna be a passion project. Yeah. So. And um, last thing, um, what has been the memory that you hold there is uh, throughout this whole journey with Nonito and his boxing career? You guys have been at the highest of the heights. God, I, I mean, I can't pick one. Like, I mean, every time we come back together as a team, um, we're all here and we're like, God, it's been like since 2007, right? And we've had, like you've said, we've had the, the greatest and the fun parts, um, you know, defeating RSA, having a really low night with Darchinian uh, part two, um, where no one knew he was fighting with the flu mm -hmm. um, and seeing him take those punches. And, you know, I had, I remember specifically, I had to yell at him. I, I wasn't in the corner, but I was front row and he looked at me. I told him you're losing mm. and then he turned it on and knocked mm. him out but he said you know that night it was like he can see things but with the flu he couldn't move um then you know uh you go down the road and he wants to go up and wait and down and wait. there's literally there there isn't one part because there's so many different dynamics of what he's done in his mm. career the journey was just it you can't you can't script this you yeah. know and it was all fun and like you said, we've gone in ups and downs, and we appreciate everyone that's always been there. Yeah. Last word for the uh, the younger fighters coming up uh, to avoid the pitfalls of boxing and and, and stay uh, focused and dedicated to their craft and uh, just what they can expect uh, uh, launching themselves into this sport. You know, pick uh, grace and humility. Always learn, um, and don't build the boogeyman. And what I'm mean by that is there's people you know there's boxers especially when they're younger um a boogeyman could be over uh, over being overly confident in front of the camera when you're not self-confident in yourself and it, it'll play on you and it'll never work out in your favor the other one is i know too much and i don't need advice from this trainer that guy or whatever because everybody every single trainer no needles ever had he picks what is right for him and he chooses and he brings it all in so everyone has a little bit of experience to give you so don't think that you're ever higher than anyone because there's always someone that's always better and the only way that you're ever going to keep getting higher is by taking everyone's knowledge in and increasing it yourself and then passing it through to the next generation that's great all right you appreciate the time like always man thank you for being so kind to me you're this welcome. fight weekend good luck on saturday yeah.